Hi folks, welcome back. Glad to see you here. What we're going to do is I want to do a little bit of remodeling of the workshop. And I don't know whether you can see behind me, but I'll just move over. This area here is my metal, or my new metal working area. And it's a complete and utter mess. And in order to do a bit of metal working, I really do need to get on with sorting out my bench. So here we go. The first thing I needed to do was to put up some new lights and they look great. We have lights. Brilliant. Now for somewhere to store all my metalworking equipment. We'll take all this stuff out and we'll put a couple of shelves in, make sure um, I can put everything on, like my helmets and welding helmets and things like that, my welder underneath, and then we'll sort that out. We'll put these shelves in first and then that will clear the table a little bit and then we can work on that. There's nothing better than having a good clear out and creating a space that I'm actually going to be able to work in. I've been meaning to do this oh, for blooming years. Get my penny on and get rid of all the dust and all the cobwebs. And now we're ready to measure up. I need these shelves to be good and solid as there's going to be a lot of weight sitting on these shelves. That'll do. Okay, so I'm going to batten the sides and use some 18mm board, some ply and OSB. It hasn't got to be pretty, just solid. Inch thick. That should be strong enough for a shelf, shouldn't it? Putting up shelves is not rocket science. You just need to make sure that you measure twice and cut once. It's amazing how many people don't actually do this and then cock it up. And that includes me. Number two, make sure you use a level. Without a level, it's not gonna be level. Number three, be careful of things like electrical cable and plumbing pipes in the walls. You've gotta be very careful that you don't hit those. And yeah, I have done that in the past. Actually, I don't know why I'm giving you advice about putting up shelves, because I haven't been very good at it. I wouldn't advise you to listen to me, to be honest. It's always good to use beefy fixings and long screws. You want the thing to be belt and braces and then some. Well, that's my philosophy anyway. In goes the first shelf. Followed quickly by two more. Now that the storage area is sorted, I can start filling it up with all the tools and metal that is going to be living there. Now for a neat little trick, making some hooks out of some old forks. I simply bend the fork into shape and then drill a hole through the head of the fork just to put a screw through. Easy. Just perfect for my welding helmet and all my visors. Okay. Look at that, brilliant. Now, this table here, I need to sort out because uh, one, the, the, it's not fixed, and two, these aren't fixed either, and I need to get them in and fix them. So what I wanna do is, is weld another leg in here, cut this, this, bottom, member, this bottom bar off, uh, so I can wheel stuff in and out of there and get the vise onto the end bolted down so that we can actually start to really use it. I'm going to start by getting my monster vise just where I want it. Sort of got the vise on the table and I've got enough clearance there to be able to go down to the floor. So I can now drill holes, three holes into and it'll just go through the plate. Drilling holes in 10 mil thick steel plate is easy, isn't it? Whenever drilling into steel, it's always a good idea to use a good quality cutting oil. And you don't want to dull your bits too quickly. It helps to retain the cutting edge on the drill bit for much, much longer, giving you a better quality cut as well. Drilling through steel this thick takes some effort. I'll save you some time. It took me about six minutes to drill the first hole. Now, on to the next one. In all, the three holes took me about 15 minutes. 
three down. That's 30 mil of plate steel I've just drilled through. That's not bad, that drill bit's quite good. Now I need to make the holes bigger. And now bigger again. And so on, you get the picture. Now to get the table frame outside so I can rearrange it a bit. The problem is it weighs about 150 kilos. So I think I'm gonna be using my trusty forklift for this one. The first thing I'm going to do is add two extra horizontal struts for support. And then I'm going to be removing some sections. The frame is made from two inch square steel tubing. It's a standard size and it's fairly easy to find at most steel stockists. Once I've cut the first length, it's now time to prepare the welding site. There's not much to it except you just need to make sure that you've got clean, bare steel. Otherwise, it's difficult to strike an arc and get a good weld. The strut is a good snug fit, but I'll clamp it anyway to make sure it stays put. You know me, belt and braces. I'll be doing some fairly simple stick welding on this. As you know, I'm not a master welder. I'm not even a novice welder. <laughs> I'm learning as I'm going along. And generally, stick welding is considered to be, well, once you've mastered it, you can do anything. So, let's get practicing. Sometimes, it's hard to strike an arc, and even harder to maintain the arc. You just have to be slow and deliberate. It just takes practice, and that's all we can do. This one isn't too bad, but I think I'll give you a close-up on the next one. Now here's an interesting effect that I didn't spot until I was editing this video. As the weld cools, it contracts, and even with my snug-fitting frame, it starts to bend upwards towards the weld. Nothing a few taps with a hammer can't fix, but interesting to see happening. On to the second weld. I've got to take welding practice. Oof, bad. Now to remove the section of frame from the bottom. This will allow me to wheel tools under the bench for storage. And a quick tidy of those ends. Next, I'm gonna add an upright. And now a crossbar to allow me to fit those big heavy drawers and hopefully they will fit. Forklift is such a valuable tool, but I'm sure I'd figure out a way of doing it without it. But let's be honest, why make life difficult? Well, oh, at least it didn't break. <laughs> I picked these up years ago, just, just like that. Perfect. I thought, I know what I'm going to do with those. And years later, here we are. These are going to go on feet, so I'm going to weld them on the bottom just like that, so they'll look pretty good got a few new rods today so I'm going to try I think my rod size is a little bit over too big for what I want it gets a bit too hot and it pierces the metal and I think I don't need to be so hot so I've got to try I've got a smaller rod so I'm gonna give it a bash see what happens you never know we might actually get it right <laughs> getting the hang of it getting the hang of it so oh all right then I'll show you hang on Get in the, look at that. You see? It's getting there. Now, I'm not going to show you this side, okay? I'm not going to show you that side because I don't want you to see that side. I'm just going to show you this side here. We're improving. We're getting there. I think that is how it's supposed to be, but who knows? So what we've got to do now is I've got to, well, I'm going to, <laughs> turn the piece of steel that's going on here upside down, put this upside down and then put them both together and then I can weld them sort of at height upside down which would make life an awful lot easier.
just weighed this and it's 210 kilos. Quite heavy. I think that was quite good, actually. I think I'm getting the hang of it. Well, that was the first one. Not too bad. Now to get on with the other sides. It would help if I turned it on first, wouldn't it? And finally, to turn it over so it's the right way up. That's solid. That's not going nowhere, is it? I can now slot in the final two pieces. Now to clean up this steel plate. Just like a lot of things in my workshop, it's second hand. I picked this up off eBay. It's had a bit of a rough life, but well, we've got to get on now and get the rust off it and smooth out those wrinkles. You know, give it a bit of beautifying. not perfect but just give it a bit of a shine it's going to get bashed this table this table is for smashing and bashing things on so and finally finally a lick of paint I think this is going to look good I went and give blood the other day you know do your bit as you should but oh never again Never. Questions, questions, questions. Whose blood is it? Where's it come from? Why is it in a bucket? Never again. I'm not going to paint all of it because I'm only going to paint the bits that are going to be seen. I know that's a cheap cop out, but I don't have a lot of time at the moment. Time is my enemy. It is always my enemy, actually. Coming to the end of this job now. Which is good, because it's taken forever. We're on the last leg. Pardon the pun. We're not quite on the last leg. That's the last leg. This is the second to last leg. This really is the last leg. <laughs> there we have it. Painted. I'm really chuffed with how this is looking. Very smart. It looks so good, I almost don't want to use it. Let's see how it looks in its new home. And now it's time to get this beast bolted in its rightful place on the end. Well, here it is. Done at long last. Wow, it's taken a while, but it's looking good. I'm particularly pleased with the, with the top. I didn't realize it would come up so well. Drawers are a pain in the ass to get in, but anyway. <laughs> they're in. I had millimetres to spare, so my measurements were right for once. <laughs> the vice is on, looking really good. Love the vice, solid as a rock. Record number 36, so it's a beast. And that will come in really handy in the future. So uh, that's it. Great. Thank you very much for watching. Hang on a minute. We're not quite done yet. Now that everything's in its place, we need to weigh this monster. 360 kilos, 792 pounds. But it's worked really well. Everything's really been recycled. I mean, I picked up the, the metal off eBay secondhand. I had to tinker with it a little bit, cut, the, cut a couple of fillets in just to make it work, but it works really well. The drawers I picked up, they were a couple of old desks that were knackered. The vice, we were at the tip one day, my wife and I, and this guy turned up in a car and opened his boot, and just as I was walking past, there was this voice. And so I went, ooh, um, is that, are you gonna throw that out? And uh, he said, yeah. I said, um, do you think I could have it? <laughs> Cheekily. <laughs> and uh, he said, yeah. So, really pleased. And uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and uh, please like and subscribe and uh, Keep a lookout for some more videos because now I've got me, my bench up and running. We'll be doing a bit more sort of metalworky type stuff as well. Thank you very much. Take care now. Cheerio.